Welcome, Guitar Geeks, to the most controversial episode of Acoustic Tuesday yet. Why, you ask? Well, because you're about to participate in a war, a battle, a fight, a heavyweight matchup between Martin Guitars and Taylor Guitars. Yes, I'm pitting the two against one another in today's episode, entitled Martin vs. Taylor. These two guitar manufacturers will go through seven rounds of fighting. I will be rating them on categories that haven't really been discussed all that much, but need to be. So you get a full understanding of Martin, you get a full understanding of Taylor, and you can make the judgment call of which one wins the fight. So let's dig right in with round number one, where we'll be discussing history. Yes, history. Martin versus Taylor in the history round. Who wins? Well. In my opinion, Martin wins this one. Clear in a way, Martin has the history. Now, this is no disrespect meant to Taylor Guitars because Taylor Guitars started in 1974. And in fact, in their 46-ish years of history, they've made some great strides and, and created some wonderful innovations for the acoustic guitar industry. But let's just rewind the clock and go back to when Martin started in 18. 33. Not only have they participated in acoustic guitar history, they've participated in U.S. history. I'm talking about just general history itself. Yes, in their 187 years, they've essentially created the acoustic guitar as we know and love it today. Now, just to, just to back up my claim on Martin winning this round, I wanna take a quick look at a video submitted by Fretboard Journal when they were there uh, some months ago in the Martin Museum, because I think that is the place that holds probably the most wonderfully curated collection that specifically puts Martin's history on display. Here's that video. I mean, I refer to Martin and Nazareth as the Mesopotamia of the guitar world because it's, it's the Fertile Crescent. So many great ideas have come out of Nazareth. And we want to showcase anything the company had built throughout the years because a lot of people know Martin for the Dreadnought, the D28, or the OM. I mean, there's so many other instruments, guitar design sizes that Martin built in. A lot of people don't realize that the Dreadnought for Martin is kind of a newer invention. I mean, they were building guitars for uh, 80 years before that body size even came around. As you can see, the Martin Guitar History Museum needs to be on your list. As a guitar geek, if you've been there, you know how awesome it is. If you haven't been there, when the time is right, when the time comes, when you can move about again, I want you to put that on your list because holy smokes, is it inspirational. Now, Martin Guitars is one of the oldest Amer uh, continually run American businesses. The oldest continually family run American businesses. And I think that's a pretty staggering title to hold. Now, I had a chance to sit down with Chris Martin of Martin Guitars and chat with him about that very topic. What it was like, what it is like to be the CEO of a company with such a rich legacy and such, a, such an amazing history. And here's what he had to say. Larry had took us, uh, taken us to uh, the old, oh, sure. old shop, yep, yep. and to see not only uh, his, the historically significant original homestead and shop yeah, that grew yeah, out of that, yeah. but also the the technology change. You know, it's, yeah. it was li literally like walking through history, yeah, yep. and now you you sit at you know the the forefront of that. Yeah, and so, you know what happened. I you know I remember this you know because I would come back and visit. I remember when I was very little, you know, we moved into the new plant in 64. So if I would, if I came to visit before age nine, yeah. I got a chance to go through the old shop. Uh -huh. And when we moved over to Sycamore Street, we didn't really change the technology. We just moved what we had right, into right. a new building. And then over time, we began to evolve the, the, sure. the way that we built a Martin guitar. But sure. so initially it was, you know, take everything we did at North Street and just do it in this building that was on one floor rather yeah. than multiple floors. Yeah. I, now in that interview, Chris talked at length about visiting the North Street factory. And I thought to myself, I had, I've had i had the chance to see that in person and holy smokes does it contain mojo. But I wanted to take you there. So I found another video, a Martin history retrospective in which Chris not only talks about North Street in a little bit more detail, but we also get to see actual 
pictures from that factory and you can kind of step back into Martin's rich history. Here it is. When I was young, I would come and, and visit my grandparents and my father here in Nazareth. And I remember going over to North Street. I remember my grandfather working there. Uh, my father had a vision of, of making distribution of Martin guitars a more significant part of the business. So he actually opened an office down around the circle. But I'd go over to North Street and you know, walk up and down the stairs with my grandfather and it was a very busy place. But I don't remember all that much. I mean, I was, you know, six, seven, eight years old. We still own North Street. We're in the process right now of moving the small goods out. We just bought a, we bought a, a building uh, that was a, a cigar wholesale facility. And they're expanding, and lo and behold, who better than us should buy a giant humidor to, so, to store our finished product in? And so we're talking about, you know, what can we do with North Street? What, what can it become in the future? There's a lot of mojo there. There's a lot of history. And I thought it would be appropriate for Dick Boak to spend some time over there with you and talk about some of that history and show you, you know, that it's a really a rabbit warren of additions and floors and nooks and crannies. And, you know, you think we were there for a long, long, long time. And in fact, this reproduction behind me is, you know, based on the original part of the original factory. It's really cool over there. I still go over once in a while and root around and, and just, you know, check out the stuff. And um, the th one of the things I really remember are the north facing windows in the last edition. And my grandfather talked about the, the evenness of the light. And, you know, back then, natural light may have in some cases been better than artificial. And no matter what the weather was like, you didn't have to worry about the sun because you were on the north side of the building. And so the light was very even. And he felt that that was the, probably the best place to work if you were doing intricate, delicate handcraft. So I think you can see the full case for Martin winning the history round. So after round one, the history round, yes, we see Martin in the lead with one point and Taylor at zero points. But I wanna know what you think. What do you think? Did I get this category right? Did, did Martin did Martin really win the history round? Let me know in the comments below if you've got a little factoidal nugget that you want to share, or if you think Taylor should have may, maybe held a little bit of a stronger fight in this category. Make sure to leave a comment and chime in because, well, you're a part of this battle just as much as I am. All right, this week on Acoustic Tuesday, we've already started the battle of Martin versus Taylor, and that will continue to rage on. We simply cannot stop now. In fact, I've got six more rounds in store for you. Some categories that you may have never considered. Some categories that simply aren't talked about on other comparison videos. Yes, there's tons of Martin versus Taylor comparison videos out there. In fact, it's quite the hot topic. I've done some myself. But today's episode of Acoustic Tuesday goes well beyond two guitars and just the way they sound. We take into account the full company. Yes, today is gonna to be the most controversial episode of Acoustic Tuesday. Not to mention, you're also gonna get some much needed positivity from your fellow guitar geeks, and there's gonna be some surprises along the way as well. That's all coming up right after this. I'm Tony Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 137. This is a show where you're gonna learn about acoustic guitar gear, discover acoustic artists, and get inspired to live your very best acoustic life. As with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I'm gonna share with you my guitar geek list for the week. And this week, it's a little bit less of a list and more of a play-by-play -play because we are, I'm announcing the fight between Martin and Taylor. Yes, they are going head-to-head, -head, round after round, and by the end of today's episode, we're gonna have a clear-cut win Winner on which one is better. Is it Martin? Is it Taylor? I'm sure you have some opinions right now, but my job is to sway those opinions. So let's dive right in to round two. What's the category we're focusing on in round two? It's sustainability. Now, I had a much more difficult time evaluating this category than I initially thought, because I thought, ah, at first you got Taylor, and that's they're, they're a runaway winner, right? I don't know. I mean, because Martin, you think about all the strides Martin has made into uh, in sustainably harvesting woods. In fact, one of my favorite Martin models 
even setting sustainability aside is the SWOM GT, the Smartwood OM. It features solid cherry back and sides, a reclaimed Sitka spruce top. Uh, it's a great model. And then you find out, oh, that's their Smartwood series. It's sustainably harvested. It's it's reclaimed wood. And that's pretty, that's a great, that's a great little point in the sustainability category. But then you gotta bring Taylor back into focus. Their manufacturing process, they have almost little to no wood waste. Not to mention the manufacturing process alone, they own an ebony sawmill. They've taught villages how to responsibly harvest wood so they could not only have wood insured for years to come, but also created little mini economies in these small villages. Bob Taylor is working on actually grafting maple trees together to create wood, maple, specifically for guitars. I'm talking like really beautiful maple. And then most recently, Bob has purchased a plot of land in Hawaii specifically to grow koa, to make sure that these species of woods that we use in guitar making are around for years and years and years to come. Now, I've had the distinct opportunity, the distinct pleasure rather, uh, to sit down with Bob Taylor and that's one of the cool things about today's episode, by the way. I just want to take a quick aside. I've had experience in both the Martin Guitar Factory and the Taylor Guitar Factory. I've seen it. I've seen the guitars being made. I've had the chance, I've had the chance to sit down with both CEOs, Chris Martin, as you've seen, and Bob Taylor, which you're about to see, in addition to Andy Powers as well, which you'll see a little bit later. But in my talk with Bob Taylor, it was very clear to me that sustainability was something that he held an extremely high regard and he has very interesting perspective on it. In fact, I'm gonna take a quick cut to this uh, particular interview that I did that I think you'll really enjoy that shed some light on how much he cares about sustainability. Here it is. You have what I think is an extremely unique and passionate view of the long term of our industry. And I really want you to shed a little bit of light on that, where it first of all came from, because you've done a ton of work with sustainable harvesting of woods and treatment of woods, et cetera. And, and I know that's just the tip of the iceberg. I want to know what first got you into that. And if you could share with us some of the projects that you're working on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad you uh, are bringing it up. I, I feel, you know, just generally speaking, I feel like I'm being funneled. My life is being funneled down in towards this this idea of, of sustainability. And in that, I mean healthy forests that can provide guitar wood. And where are they gonna be? That's part of the question. What woods they're gonna be? That's another part of the question. I started seeing this, you could see it, the handwriting was on the wall during my lifetime as a guitar builder. This is our, we're hitting our 40th anniversary momentarily. And uh, yeah, and during that time, you, I realized that I'm living in the area where you cross the threshold of there was all the wood in the world to there's not anymore. Right. And people have heard about dwindling supplies and what's happening to the rainforest and these things. But we live up here and we don't really see it. But if you could go out and see it, every, I always think if I could take any client to any wood supplier, I don't mean a store where they sell it, but I mean sure. where the wood is really produced, yeah. and show them where wood really comes from, every one of them would go home being an, a, an absolute passionate believer in sustaining these species. And so I watched wood change. I watched wood get smaller. Uh -huh. not, not only just the, the sizes of the wood that I used to use, mm -hmm. but less available. The stacks of them diminished. And so f in order for us to get the wood that so in thinking about sustainability, I think it's great that both manufacturers have this top of mind. But I want to I want to I want to be firm in announcing the winner here because I think Taylor is blazing the trail. So Taylor wins in the sustainability category in my humble opinion. In fact, I want to even dig one layer further. I want to visit the Taylor factory so you can see even more sustainable initiatives that they have going on. Let's have a look. As far as sustainability is concerned, Taylor's uh, a big player in the industry as far as that's concerned. About five years ago, six years ago, we purchased a mill in Africa, Cameroon, Africa, that harvests and mills ebony wood. And ebony is really important to our guitars. We use it on just about every guitar. The mahogany neck, the necks that we make every day and have for 20 plus years, they've been made 
in a way that increases the yield of the wood, of the tree. That decision was faced with a lot of uh, pushback from either our competitors or customers thinking that we were taking an easier route when this is actually a more difficult neck to produce. All of it was in an effort to make sure that mahogany was going to be around a long, long time in the future as well. We get stuff from all of So yes, if I haven't made myself entirely clear, Taylor wins the sustainability round. They win round two. So after round two, we've got Martin sitting at one point. We've got Taylor sitting at one point. It is a deadlock tie. Now, if you want to see that interview in its entirety, which I recommend you do, please visit acousticlife.tv forward slash AT137. In fact, you'll not only get to see that Bob Taylor interview, that's one of three parts. You'll also be able to see that full Chris Martin interview as well, which you saw a little bit earlier. And my most recent visit to the Taylor factory, I actually had a chance to sit down with Bob uh, during a podcast taping and ask him some, some more questions about sustainability and things like that. So there's going to be a lot of goodies at acousticlife.tv forward slash AT137 for you guitar geeks to dig through. And I also want to know what you think about the sustainability topic. Did I pick the right winner here? Or should I have given a little bit harder look at Martin's initiatives? Let me know in the comments below. I want to know your opinion. I think this episode will be one for great guitar geek discussion. Remember to be kind. I know you will be. You are awesome guitar geeks. But uh, let me know in the comments. Let's create a little bit of buzz in those comments and uh, get some differing viewpoints on each of these rounds. And speaking on each of these rounds, let's visit the next round. Round three. We're gonna be talking about manufacturing. As I mentioned before, I've had a chance to visit Nazareth, Pennsylvania. I've had a chance to walk through the Martin Guitar Factory. I've had a chance to visit the Taylor Guitar Factory and walk through that guitar factory. So who wins the manufacturing end of the spectrum? Who wins this round? Now, I think both factories are incredibly impressive. Uh, when, you're, when you look at going from raw wood to finished guitar, when you walk through both of these factories, you will just be in complete amazement uh, at the work going on, the refined and technical work that's happening, the handwork that's happening in both places, and just the sheer amount of guitars being made to the degree of consistency that they are is, is just awe-inspiring. It's, it's truly amazing. But... I have to pick a winner in this category. I have to pick a winner for round three, the manufacturing category, and I have to say that Taylor wins this one, in my opinion. After having walked through Taylor's Guitar Factory and seen their marriage, their synergy of both handwork and automation, I think Taylor wins this one because of their efficiency, because of their production, because of their use of implements that make jobs that are repeated much easier so that they can use the human work, the handwork, where it's most needed. They've got robots that bend sides. They've got a robotic sprayer that sprays finishes to an inc insane degree of accuracy. And check this out. I don't know, I have to, I have to double check my facts on this. Their spray booth, I wanna say that the, the spray, the lacquer that they use, the UV cure lacquer that they use, is actually positively charged and the guitar body is negatively charged, which decreases waste because almost zero spray is left over for overspray. I, I think I have that right. One of them's positive, one of them's negative so that they get the most out of the finish that they use. It's little things like that that make Taylor the winner in my eyes in this particular category. So in manufacturing, yes, Taylor wins. In fact, I think they're a runaway winner. And this is with all due respect to Martin because I think they make guitars to an insane degree of consistency as well. But some of the innovations Taylor has made, something simple like putting a, a black light activated substance in their glue so they can make sure that they've sanded all the glue off before finishing. Those are the little things that I think make Taylor a huge winner in this category. Now, uh, I wanted to actually take you through the guitar factory at Taylor. In fact, um, this is a clip that I borrowed from Sam Ash, so huge thanks to them. But this will give you a little bit of insight into the day-to-day -day and some of the cool machinery that they actually use in making guitars. Here it is.
pretty cool to see those machines and kind of robotics in action. And uh, it's just amazing to walk through that and be a part of that. And I'm saying this for both both manufacturers here. In fact, as I watched that video with you, I thought to myself, man, you know, seeing the machinery is really nice, but there's an element of, of romanticism behind handwork and seeing somebody hand spray a finish. And I totally get that. So the reason I judged Taylor the way I did in manufacturing is because they're able to put out a serious number of guitars in, in, in an insane degree of efficiency. That's why they won the manufacturing category. So after round three, the manufacturing category, we see Martin at one point and Taylor at two points. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Taylor is taking the lead but I wanna get your opinion on the manufacturing process. Let me know in the comments below if you think I was dead wrong or if I was dead right in this particular round. In fact, for those of you that have been to Martin, for those of you that have been to Taylor, share your experience in the comments below and help generate some more discussion about these two manufacturers because these are truly the behemoths in the acoustic guitar industry. They make insane amounts of instruments and I think we need to finally put it to rest. Which one is better, Martin or Taylor? I'm gonna continue on the fight here. I'm gonna continue. We've got four more rounds to go. Some categories that you may have never considered. Some categories that may ruffle some feathers here as I go forward, but I think right now, we need to send the fighters to their corners. We need to send the fighters to their corners. They need to ice up. They need to uh, do other things that boxers do. They need to get the pep talk from the coach like Rocky did. They need to, um, they need to get a new mouth guard. They need to just chill because it's getting heated in here. We got Taylor at two points, Martin at one point. And I think things are just gonna only get more heated, but let's let the fighters chill for a second and visit some comments from episode number 135, where we talked about bluegrass dreadnoughts under $300. I wanna visit a couple comments because, well, quite frankly, you rock. And I appreciate you all chiming in and commenting. Let's, our, let's visit our first comment from Tony T. First, let's take pause and just celebrate that name because Tony is just an awesome name. So uh, Tony T says this, Maybe next Acoustic Tuesday show, you could give tips on how to start a jam group. That would be awesome. Peace and love from Union, Washington. Thank you, Tony, for helping us all stay positive and a part of the joy of life. Well, Tony, thank you so much for your comments, for the kind words, and also for the suggestion on how to start a jam group. I'm gonna actually put that on my list for next week's episode. Maybe not next week's episode, but a future episode that will focus on jamming. Uh, make sure to stay tuned for that. Our next comment comes from none other than Minnelli Jamal. Yes, Minnelli Jamal not only was featured on the Acoustic Tuesday show as an artist, not only did he submit his answer to our three Acoustic Life questions, he's an Acoustic Tuesday viewer, and he quite simply said, hey, thanks again for having me on the show. Minnelli, thank you for making awesome music. Uh, if you have not started following Minnelli Jamal on the social media thing, uh, Instagram specifically, he's been posting some awesome performances, so um, make sure to follow him. Show, show our fellow Acoustic Tuesday artists some love. Uh, his compositions are truly inspiring and just, just gorgeous. Uh, they kind of take you away, which is what we all need in a time like this. Our next comment comes from Patty Harrington. And holy smokes, ladies and gentlemen, she has confirmed that I might be really close to joining the Cool Kids Club. Let me explain. Patty says this, great show as always. Check out Billy Strings. He also has had a Fender Acoustasonic Stratocaster in his hands. The video is on his Facebook page. Now, I thought it was cool when I received a Fender Acoustasonic Stratocaster in the mail. And then I saw Molly Tuttle playing one of these instruments and I thought, okay, tone. This is really cool. And then Patty's comment directed me to Billy Strings. And then lo and behold, he is playing a Fender Acoustasonic Stratocaster as well. I feel like the Cool Kids Club is growing. I love it. I am certainly in the lower tier of the Cool Kids Club, but happy to be there. I could be the treasurer. I could be the, the note taker. Whatever the Cool Kids Club needs, I'll, I'll try my best. If they need somebody to do recycling, I'll do recycling, I'll, I'll do the runs, that's fine. Uh, but just, just to prove that Billy Strings did indeed have one of these guitars in his hands, let's just, well, let's just have a look at that video that Patty told us about. <laughs> Uh, 
it's ridiculous to see him play. It's totally ridiculous. In fact, when I was uh, going through and gathering videos and things for the show this weekend, I was at home, and <clears throat> Whitney was uh, sitting across from me at the kitchen table, and I would start laughing, and I'd be like, dude, unbelievable. And she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, watch this. She's like, yeah, that's pretty good. It clearly didn't have the effect on her that it had on me. However, I think she appreciated it nonetheless. And I certainly appreciate Patty for uh, showing me, bringing my attention to that video. So cool. Another thing I noticed is that Billy Strings had the Sunburst Acoustasonic. Molly Tuttle had the Black Acoustasonic. And I have the Natural one. Um, that being the case... I think the Cool Kids Club is really shaping up to be a pretty diverse, really cool group of folks. Uh, all these different finishes on the guitar, uh, some great players, the treasurer, you know, you get the idea. Let's move on to our next comment from Dud Golfer, which I found was a funny moniker. Uh, and Dud Golfer says this, Hey Tony, greetings from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I really needed to hear you talk about leaning on the guitar in times of stress and uncertainty. I lost my wife of 36 years, nine months ago to ovarian cancer, and I'm certainly leaning on my guitar as the one constant in my life. Your spirit inspires, and I appreciate what you're doing here, providing a place for people to connect. I'm a big fan, thank God for music. Uh, I can't thank you enough for sharing that comment, and that is just a huge piece of guitar gratitude that you shared. Uh, thank you so much for opening up and sharing that with us. Uh, I'm very, very uh, sorry to hear of your wife passing, but I'm so happy that you're able to lean on guitar in times of, of stress and sadness and just needing to kind of have that little positive light in your life. And just know that all of us guitar geeks are here with you as well. Um, and we're here to see you succeed and, and progress on your guitar journey. So thank you so much for sharing that comment and uh, a huge tip of the hat for being vulnerable with us here. I very much appreciate that. And I just wanna thank all of you Acoustic Tuesday viewers for your amazing comments and just being awesome guitar geeks. Support supportive, encouraging, uplifting guitar geeks, and uh, just helping one another along. Now, we have a battle to get back to. Yes, it is Martin versus Taylor. And I think it's interesting, the preconceived notions that are out there surrounding Martin, surrounding Taylor. And right here in the Acoustic Life Studios, we have somebody that wants to shed some light on the Martin versus Taylor debate. Yes, Colorado Kyle, when we were practicing for the show, said, you know, I think I'd like to chime in. Now, Colorado Kyle has been here at Acoustic Life Studios for quite some time and has seen his fair share of guitars and has formulated his own opinions from, well, what he's seen either on YouTube or me talk about. And uh, Colorado Kyle, thanks for taking a break from the buttons. Um, what's your take on the whole Martin versus Taylor vibe? What, what do you see? Martin as or Taylor as I didn't know there was a mic here the whole time <laughs> You're using it perfectly um, Yeah, just talk right into it so okay. people can hear you. All right. I know I know he's he's not on camera folks But he's a real individual. I'm talking to him right now mm -hmm. uh, Shut it. What's what's your perspective on Martin versus Taylor? What's your vibe? Yeah, when we talked about this subject I, I did I was like being kind of like a guitar layman type person, not knowing a lot, I always felt like there was a lot of prestige with Martin guitars ah. and not so much uh, with Taylor. I felt like Taylor was always like more of like a working man's type of guitar. Interesting. Like, like it can kind of be, it's kind of good for everybody. But sure. like if you like are like a real good guitar player, then you play a Martin. Ah. If, you're, if you just want to be like a everyday man, guitar player, then you play a Taylor. Interesting. That's interesting, you know, uh, because I, you had said earlier, or this might've been last week, you had said, hey, you know, I, I could, I would never, I would never think about owning a Martin because I'm just, I'm just not that good yet. That is true. And I, I think that, that kind of matches your, uh, your, your take on the, on the scenario. And I think it's interesting. And one of the things I want to ask the, the viewers right now is in the comments below, what's your notion on Martin versus Taylor? Do you feel like uh, the, the brands carry a stigma? What's Taylor's stigma? What's Martin's stigma? Let's generate some discussion about this because I found it uh, interesting that, that Kyle was like, I, I kinda wanna chime in on this because I think this is the type of episode that brings about a lot of opinions in, in Colorado. Kyle, thank you for sharing that. Uh, although you're an Avalanche fan, well, it's, good to, it's good to hear you speak. It's good to let you come out of the cage every now and again. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> so in the comments below, please let us know what you think. What's the, what's the stigma associated with Martin guitars 
And what's the stigma associated with Taylor guitars? I think it would be an interesting discussion to have because obviously, as Kyle pointed out, they certainly have kind of an aura around them. And I think depending on how you've entered the guitar world, that will depend on how you view each of those brands. So in the comments below, let me know. What do you think the stigma is with Martin? What do you think the stigma is with Taylor? Uh, I gotta say this, you know, as a guitar geek, uh, starting guitar at age 18, I come from a Martin family. I mean, you know how there's there's Ford and Chevy families? Well, I think there are Martin and Taylor families, and I certainly come from a Martin family. My dad played a Martin, he still plays a Martin to this day, and even talking about Taylor in front of him, he's like, ah, oh, uh, Martin's the only guitar that I love. But I know that there are families out there that have the exact opposite point of view. So I wanna know what you think is, is surrounding the stigma of each of these manufacturers. Well, let me know in the comments below Let's start this discussion. In fact, uh, while you do that, I'm gonna just kick right into round four. And round four is an interesting one because round four, the category is standard model offering. How well does the manufacturer cover beginner guitars all the way up to high-end guitars? And do they do so in an efficient way? Do they do so in a way that represents a bunch of different tones, a bunch of different sounds, a bunch of different body sizes for each player in each price category? Now, on one hand, you have Martin guitars, and I think their model range is extensive. Uh, and I think once you understand the nomenclature used in the Martin kind of naming convention, it starts to make sense. But as a new guitar player, somebody new to the Martin line, it's kind of not the easiest name convention to get uh, kind of a dialect to understand. On the other hand, you've got Taylor, who has a pretty streamlined approach. Each series, you've got the beginners, starting with the Academy series, and then you move to the 100 and 200 series, and both of those feature laminate or layered back and sides. And then you enter solid woodland. You've got the 300 series, then you've got the 400 series, 500, 600, 700, 900. You've got the Koa series. You've got all these series that actually have specific appointments associated with each one, and each series actually has appointments and tonewood combinations dedicated to a unique attribute that that series offers. So in the standard model offering category, I think Taylor is the winner. Yes, that's my opinion. I think Taylor does a great job of being efficient and offering options to the player that are easy to understand, but not only easy to understand on paper, but I think you also hear the benefits of each series. And I think that's one of the things that, while Martin does cover a lot of ground, you really gotta sink into their world to find the guitar that's a match for you. I mean, you've got you've got guitars from Martin that have HPL, different laminate back and sides. You've got guitars from Martin with different bracing patterns, different neck joints. With Taylor, you're really looking at some aesthetic components and some wood combinations. Beyond that, there's not many variables, which I think allows the Taylor line to be much better understood in a much quicker fashion. So yes, I believe Taylor Guitars wins round four in the standard model offering, which yes, at the end of round four, that puts Taylor at three points and Martin at a single point. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Taylor has taken a striking lead in this particular category. Yes, Taylor at three points, Martin at a single point. Can Martin come back at this point? I don't, I, hmm, this is, this, we got, I'm looking at the categories coming up and I'm excited to dig into them because you wanna talk about controversial. Yikes, holy smokes. But I wanna know what you think. What's your experience with the standard models from Martin, the standard models from Taylor? Let me know in the comments below. Did I miss the boat in this category? Did I totally screw this category up? Do you think Martin's standard model offering is much better than Taylor's and I should consider a different viewpoint? If that's the case, let me know in the comments below or do you support my decision in Taylor winning the standard model offering category? Either way, let me know in the comments below. Like I said, I wanna spur some discussion. I want feathers to be ruffled, but I want you to, of course, express your opinions in a nice, kind, and safe manner in the comments below. Uh, I'd love to create some Guitar Geek discussion. Like I said, Martin versus Taylor is much, much deeper than just pitting one guitar versus another. There are different aspects of each of these companies that you absolutely must consider and absolutely must be educated on. I, I didn't know until I actually went to these places and now I feel like I've gathered enough information to finally breach this topic in an in-depth manner, which is exactly what we're doing today. 
So commence the end of round four. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Again, Taylor is sitting at three points. Martin is sitting at one point. Let's take a small break. Let's give the fighters another chance to separate. And I just want you to know that you can support the Acoustic Tuesday show by buying Acoustic Tuesday merchandise. Yes, just visit AcousticTuesday.store and pick out your favorite t-shirt, pair of socks or sweatshirt. Get it shipped directly to your door so you can wave your Guitar Geek flag. I want to specifically highlight the Guitar Arsenal shirt, which you'll see at AcousticTuesday.store. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, guitar geeks of all ages, I want to bring back the Guitar Arsenal segment. What's the Guitar Arsenal segment? You might be new to the Acoustic Tuesday show. You might be thinking, what the hell is this guy talking about? The Guitar Arsenal segment is a very specific segment for you guitar geeks to share your guitar collection, to share the joy that guitar brings to your life. So what is the Guitar Arsenal segment? It's you submitting a picture of your guitar collection and I feature you in an episode of Acoustic Tuesday. How do you participate it? It's how, how do you participate in it? It's easy, there's only three steps. Number one, buy yourself that fancy Guitar Arsenal shirt at AcousticTuesday.store. Step number two, once you receive that shirt, take a picture of yourself with the shirt on amongst your guitar collection. If you wanna include dogs, bonus points. If you wanna include family members, double bonus points. If you wanna include little Easter eggs, triple bonus points. And step number three is to go ahead and submit that guitar arsenal picture at acousticlife.tv. You'll see a submit link in the top menu. Go ahead and click on it. You can upload your picture, describe your entire guitar collection, and I will feature you on an upcoming episode of Acoustic Tuesday. What do you say, guitar geeks? Let's bring the guitar arsenal segment back in full force. I want to see your guitar collections. I know your fellow guitar geek wants to see your guitar collections. Let's celebrate this. A lot of us are cooped up at home. What better time to bust out all the guitars and get a nice family picture? And you can include, you know, your spouse or your significant other as well. Uh, I meant family with guitars, but you get the idea. You know what I'm talking about. All right. Whew. This next category. Oh, you want to talk about ruffling feathers? This next round, round number five, is one that took me some time to sift through. We got a lot of things to consider in round number five. Why? Well, because round number five focuses on innovation. Yes. Does Martin innovate more than Taylor? Does Taylor innovate more than Martin? Well, let's sink into this category for a second. Let's sink into innovation. First, let's look at Martin. Martin introduced the dreadnought body shape, uh, kind of a big deal. Martin introduced, they went from 12 fret necks to 14 fret necks. That's also kind of a big deal. Uh, Martin also, speaking of big deals, they introduced the X-bracing pattern, uh, which is used on nearly 99% of guitars today. Uh, there's that handsome young fellow showing off that Martin X-bracing pattern. Ah, those were the days. Look at that flannel. That's a beaut. That's a Pendleton. I think I got that at a garage sale. Cheers, young Tony. Cheers, young Tony. So Martin has played a big role in innovation. In fact, uh, you could argue that Martin has essentially designed the guitar from the ground up, the, the acoustic guitar that we know and love today. Okay, that's one end of the spectrum. Now let's let's visit Taylor Land. Let's we were in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Let's let's head on down to California and visit Taylor. Let's look at some of Taylor's innovations. Yes. Okay, Taylor inter introduced V-class bracing. The first new major bracing pattern, which was a, a kind of a, a sidestep from X bracing. Yes, there's been other experimental bracing patterns, but this is the first one that to the best of my knowledge has been produced in mass and done so very successfully. So Taylor's innovated the bracing pattern, introducing this V-class bracing pattern. They've also introduced a new neck joint, uh, a neck style, the NT neck, which makes a neck reset much, much, much easier involving shims. It's a very user-friendly neck design. And then lastly, another innovation from Taylor is their ES2 pickup system, which is a proprietary pickup that they developed in-house to achieve maximum balance and the best output output from your guitar pickup. So here we've got, we've got Martin on one hand with all these groundbreaking innovations. And then we've got Taylor on the other hand with some equally, in my opinion, groundbreaking innovations. So who wins this category? I, I think that's a question we will answer, but, but let's sink into a couple more questions that should actually be posed. And I think they're much deeper and much more philosophical than you may have anticipated. You know, I think one of the questions that, that we need to ask here is, does Taylor even get a chance to innovate if it weren't for Martin setting the foundation? 
I mean, Martin came out of the gate and they innovated and they innovated and they innovated and then they kind of rested on their laurels. Now, I'm not saying this is a dig at Martin. I'm saying this because they, they went through this insane growth and this insane innovation and then they kind of just wrote it out. And then Taylor kind of picked up where Martin left off. So it begs the other question, is Martin now starting to take cues from Taylor? I see this insane shift happening in which Martin, or rather Taylor is introducing these new developments and Martin's kind of like, oh, maybe we need to modernize a little bit. Maybe we need to try some new things. So who wins this category? Who wins the innovation category? Well, I think you're gonna be mad at me when I announce the winner of round five here. The innovation category winner is both. It's Martin and Taylor. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this category is a tie. I cannot define a winner here because yes, I think Martin was a trailblazer, but then I think there was this almost handing of the baton to Taylor and they continued to innovate. And here's how I'd like to look at it. I like to think of it as both companies are obvious monsters in the acoustic guitar industry, but I think they bring out the best in one another. Martin sets the ball rolling, Taylor picks it up and starts to innovate. Martin sees that Taylor's innovating and they start innovating in their own way. And then Taylor sees that and then they start innovating in their own way. Ultimately, this healthy competition brings about the best ideas for the entire acoustic guitar industry. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, round five is a deadlock tie. Martin gets a point, Taylor gets a point. I'm breaking my own rules here. I wanted to define a clear cut winner and I'm sad and I'm mad at myself because I can't. This, this, this topic alone almost deserves an entire episode, but we don't have time for that. So let's just quickly recap the score. Yes, currently after this tied round, round five, Martin is sitting at two points and Taylor is sitting at four points. Yes, Taylor is at four points. Taylor has a two point lead on Martin. Now, let me just say this, this particular category was, I knew it was gonna ruffle feathers, but I had to think back to when V-Class bracing was introduced. And at first I was highly skeptical of this at then I would put innovation in quotes because I just didn't believe in it. But I had an actual chance to visit Andy Powers at the Taylor Guitar Factory and we sat down and chatted at length about V-Class bracing and it totally switched my mind into being very skeptical, from being very skeptical to a, a real believer and almost admiration for a guitar builder to go out on a limb and introduce something so new that really kind of, well, bucked tradition. So just to let you in on that particular chat that Andy and I had, uh, here's a little segment from the interview that I think you'll find interesting. As a client tribute, I go, well, I need a guitar that is very strong so the notes can last a long time, or very rigid and very flexible. How do you build that? That statement in and of itself sounds like an incredible juxtaposition. Well, it is. That, <laughs> was, that was actually what I had written in my shop notebook when I drew this picture, is I was struggling with this going, these are opposite characteristics. How can one thing have these two characteristics? Right. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so usually we build guitars with like this big X brace thing. That's a balance between the two. Right. It's not really strong in any direction and it's not really flexible in any direction. It's kind of a balancing point where you go, yeah, it's kind of in the middle. It's pretty, yeah. pretty good balance. And so I thought of this way where I go, okay, what if I treated different parts of the guitar almost more systemically? So rather than asking one top to do everything and building it with a structure that tries to do everything, what if I build it with a structure that allows certain parts of it to do certain things and other parts to have these other characteristics? So essentially I made the middle of the guitar very, very strong. So I made the guitar parallel to the strings really strong. Right. So the notes would last long. And then I made it flexible in other ways so that it could make a lot of volume. Right. I really appreciate Andy taking time with me to kind of dispel some of my, well, curiosities and ultimately objections to the new bracing pattern. Now that 
particular chat is also known as the Battle of the Ray-Bans. And if you wanna check out that entire, uh, it's, it's actually almost an hour long interview that I conducted with Andy, please visit acousticlife.tv forward slash AT137. You'll be able to see the entire thing and there's a lot of juicy little factoidal nuggets in there that I think you guitar geeks would absolutely enjoy. Now again, please leave your comments about the innovation category in the comments below and let me know. You know, say, hey, Tone, I think you missed the boat on this one. Remember this innovation? Or, hey, Tone, I think, I think you're right on this one. I think it is a deadlock tie. Uh, let me know. I'm, I'm curious to, to see how that discussion goes. Now, let's move on to what I think is one of my favorite rounds, my favorite categories of all time. We're coming into round six, and we're going to talk about the custom shop. Yes, the custom shop. I have had the distinct honor to design a custom guitar at Martin Guitars, and I've had the distinct honor to design a custom guitar at Taylor Guitars. And I have to say that both experiences were downright amazing. I loved each one. I, I mean, I can't, it's hard for me to even separate the two because it's a guitar geek. You're looking at stacks of wood and all this amazingly figured different species of tone was in each place. And it's like a kid in a candy store. Hey, yeah, go ahead and take your pick, design your guitar. So at Taylor, I designed a 12 fret small body guitar with uh, Engelman spruce top and Macassar ebony back and sides, a stunning guitar, sounded great. Slotted headstock, finger style player's dream. And at Martin Guitars, I designed an OM with bird's eye maple back inside, a Swiss spruce top and some really elegant appointments. Now, I think the guitar that I ended up purchasing is what determines the winner here. And I ended up purchasing that custom Martin guitar. Now this is, again, not a dig at Taylor's custom shop because they're extremely capable. Uh, they are very, very capable and have some wonderful species and, and different kinds of woods to pick from. However, I think Martin guitar's custom shop is far and away the winner here because they continually break the mold when it comes to designing a custom guitar. I'm talking from subtle differences to bracing differences, all the way to fully inlaid guitars that you look at and you're like, how did a human actually even do that? Now, in, in visiting the Martin Custom Shop, I got to meet all the folks there and they are so knowledgeable and so passionate about what they do. In fact, the video that you're about to look at uh, kicks off with Emily, whom I met there and who helped me design the rosette for my custom Martin. And uh, well, why don't you take it away, Emily, and the rest of the folks at Martin's Custom Shop. Here they are. A bunch of guitar nerds, so we take into account all the detail. First thing I'm going to ask them is what, what body style are you going to build? And then uh, get into that a little bit more. So what, what kind of music do you like? Um, or do you play heavy? Are you a finger picker? And we get into those details, and I can kind of fish through those and ask them, what top preference would you prefer? And we can go on that in that direction. Do you want something fancy? Do you want a fancy top? Do you want to keep it simple? Yeah, we can pretty much do it all down here. Um, it could be as, as simple as just a, a neck shape or a top species or a back species, or it can be incredibly pearl inlaid, very fancified, very personalized. Uh, that type of thing. So it can be from one extreme to the other. It can mean a lot of different things for a lot of different people. So that's what makes the custom shop unique. Yes, Guitar Geeks, I am marking a definitive winner after this round, and it is Martin's Custom Shop. Martin wins this category which, oh, we're seeing a little bit of a, a comeback surge here from Martin Guitars. After round six, the score is currently Martin three and Taylor four. Yes, Martin just closed in on Taylor due to their custom shop's capabilities. Holy smokes. Now, I wanna ask you guitar geeks watching, who of you have actually had a custom guitar built from Martin or from Taylor, and what was your experience like? Please share it in the comments below, and let me know, did I get that one right? Do you think Martin's custom shop is better than Taylor's custom shop? Or do you think the opposite is true? I wanna know, let's start that discussion. I know I'm asking a lot of you guitar geeks, but you know what, this is a big battle with a lot of opinions, and I wanna hear them. Just because we're guitar geeks that have different opinions doesn't mean we can't come together and generate awesome discussion about each manufacturer and maybe shed a little bit of light that other guitar geeks didn't necessarily consider before. So please, please leave a comment about the custom shops in the comments below. And let's move on. Oh, uh, we've got one more round. We've got round seven coming up. Yes, round seven awaits. We currently have Taylor sitting at four points and Martin sitting at three points. So it is a 
it is a dead even race. Well, I guess Taylor is leading a little bit, but we're gonna finalize this battle here in round seven. But first I wanna visit the mailbag because some interesting arrivals did indeed come in. Uh, first, I wanna thank Billy Strings because my, my merchandise came. I got this super rad Billy Strings hat. Yeah, it's, a, it's like a T-Rex on monster truck tires, a car that I'd like to drive, and I found this really rad hooded sweatshirt, Billy Strings sweatshirt, that I'm super pumped about. And I believe it was designed by Squishy Eyes, I wanna say is the artist, but really cool kind of offset printing. I'm super excited. And more, more importantly, I was excited to support uh, Billy Strings and really all the artist's merchandise that I purchased in the last couple weeks. Uh, you know, they're not being able to tour right now. And I think it's really important as guitar geeks that we rally behind our favorite artists and support them in any way we can. Now, this doesn't purely mean a monetary support. This purely, this could mean, you know, just liking a post that they, they post on social media. This could mean attending one of those live stream concerts that, that uh, a lot of our favorite artists are putting out right now. And it could mean, you know, buying their merchandise or, or purchasing their music or just streaming their music on Spotify. You know, a lot of us are stuck at home. We need tunes to listen to. Sign up for Spotify and just stream the hell out of your favorite artist. And uh, just show support where you can. Uh, it was really delightful to get these pieces of merchandise. And I also want to thank uh, Dead Horses for sending me this amazing tour poster. I actually ordered it last week, and I'm super excited. I'm going to get this framed and hang it up in the studio. I, I absolutely love those guys. They played at the Acoustic Life Festival. I had a chance to join them on stage when they played here uh, most recently with Charlie Parr. Just delightful memories, wonderful people, people, and I'm, I'm just super excited to support them as well. I've got a couple of other orders coming in that haven't, I've not received yet. I've got some Molly Tuttle stuff coming, of course. I mean, <laughs> how could I not support Molly Tuttle uh, on the Acoustic Tuesday show? I mean, Whitney thinks I'm crazy, but I think she's excited because the shirt's really cool. You'll see it when it comes. I also uh, received some mail from some of our very own Acoustic Tuesday viewers, which was so cool. Uh, first, I want to thank Guy B., for the fifth of Jack Daniels to get me through a, a, a difficult time, which I'll read about here. He sent a letter as well. It's not the difficult time you're thinking of. He also sent me, uh, <laughs> Tampa Bay's goalie Vasilevsky is, is an awesome goalie. He sent me this shirt to wear. Um, now I'm a goalie fan, I should say that. So I, I actually really am, am appreciative of this shirt. Now Guy also sent me this little diorama that he created uh, that was, um, a housewarming gift. Whitney and I just moved into a new house and it was it's really cool. I actually took it home to show Whitney so I don't have it here, but it's a diorama that has uh, it's it's tiny and it show it says his and hers with an arrow. The the hers arrow points to a very neatly stacked pile of firewood and the his points to a very uh, kind of haphazardly stacked uh, uh, stack of firewood, which behind the stack, there's a stool and a little mini guitar, which pretty much accurately describes uh, the difference between Whitney and I. But uh, let me just read you a little bit of Guy's, Guy's letter here. He says, hey, Tony, I heard you mention a few times on AT, <clears throat> on AT that you and Whitney moved. So I made a house uh, or studio warming gift for you guys. Also threw in a lightning t-shirt for you that you can wear when you watch Tampa beat Colorado, since the Hawks are out and a drink you can have when Vasilevsky holds up the trophy. He also goes on to thank, uh, uh, he, he said, thanks to the team, Acoustic Tuesday, Tony's Acoustic Challenge, the TAC community and fretboard wizard, and the Monday inspirational emails for taking this old drummer that always wanted to learn guitar and never took the time till I retired four years ago. And now I can call myself a guitar player. And the Andrew White I won gets played daily. I hope to purchase Rodent soon, very nice. Uh, thanks so much, Guitar Geeks Unite. Sincerely, your friend, Guy B. So thanks so much, Guy, for sending that out. Uh, always cool to hear from, from each of you uh, Acoustic Tuesday viewers. The next piece of mail comes from my favorite location in the world, the Great White North. This comes from Julie I, and she sent, uh, well, I should show you what she sent. First, uh, well, there's two things. I'm gonna show you. The first thing is a Canadian-inspired mug with the Acoustic Life logo, a Boucher, Canadian guitar on it. Also, the Blackhawks logo, the Montreal Canadiens logo, a little hamster there, and a uh, Colorado Avalanche logo for um, Colorado Kyle there. Uh, so pretty cool little mug there. I'll definitely put that to good use. Now, before I show you the next thing, uh, she also included a letter, which was just so kind. She said, I'm sending you a little something in preparation for the hockey playoffs and perhaps to add to your decor for Acoustic Tuesday. Great show, by the way. The little thing is a small token of my appreciation 
appreciation for all things guitar you have given me over the past four years, along with thousands of other people watching reviews. I found yours to be quite humorous and knowledgeable. My interest for guitar and lessons grew, and I signed up a few months after following your videos online. A simple thank you does not suffice for all the good things TAC has brought to me, but now that I'm for, but now, but know that I'm forever grateful to you and your team. And she went on to, 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 just, to just say, you, know, you see, years ago, I hurt my back beyond repair and I'm stuck with chronic back pain that can be quite debilitating at times. However, I'm not one to give up. And since all sports were off the market, I had to get my brain busy as it never stops. Anywho, YouTube found me a solution in guitar and through your enthusiasm for all things acoustic, I was hooked. Speaking of hooks, as you are reading this, you will perhaps have found that what is all wrapped up in the package. Both our teams are wild cards as I'm typing this. I wish you the best of luck with the playoffs. Julie's team is the Montreal Canadiens. My team is the Chicago Blackhawks. She included a quick reminder that said Montreal has thus far won 24 Stanley Cups and the Chicago Blackhawks have only won six, um, which was startling to see. But uh, I will say that, you know, the Hawks do have a modern hockey dynasty. I, I am saddened at the fact that the, um, the NHL season was postponed, but of course I understand why. I don't hold any ill will towards the NHL for canceling it. They did the safest darn thing they possibly could. But thanks to Julie, I can experience the Stanley Cup. She turned on a metal lathe a miniature Stanley Cup. This thing is weighty, it's made out of real metal, and she actually made it. She turned it on a lathe herself. She says this is this is one of six Stanley Cups that she has made, and uh, I'm just darn right excited. It's about the right height for my bobblehead here, right? So I could potentially, I mean, in my fantasy world, I play for the Chicago Blackhawks, we've won the 2020 Stanley Cup, and I could just, I just hold it above my head like this, you know, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Anyways, uh, you get the idea. Uh, huge thanks to Julie for sending that. Uh, what a delight. What a cool little uh, a piece. Uh, we'll call it a prop to the Acoustic Tuesday set, but it does mean so much more. I'm so thankful that you have found uh, so much in the guitar, so much in the guitar geek community, and really has brought a bright light to your life. So thanks so much for thinking of us here at the studios. And uh, speaking of guitar gratitude, you know, this is something that I've, ta I've touched on the uh, last couple of weeks on Acoustic Tuesday, and I want to keep this train rolling. In fact, you're going to hear from two guitar geeks that are expressing their guitar ga gratitude. And I just love hearing this firsthand from our very own Acoustic Tuesday viewers and them just kind of a, taking a second to get introspective and, and sharing what they love about the guitar, what the guitar has brought them. And in a bit, I'll, I'll, sh I'll share with you how you can actually participate in this segment. But first, let's hear from Kurt G in his guitar gratitude. Here he is. Hey Tony, thought I'd record a quick video uh, to tell you a little bit about what being part of a guitar community uh, means to me. And um, it means a whole bunch of stuff that, that's probably expected when you talk about guitar community, but it, it means a whole bunch more than that too. Um, so, so what do I mean? Um, you join a guitar community, which sounds a little weird at first, but basically it just means you have a bunch of friends that, that like to play guitar. Um, and you share that experience together as, as you learn to play um, and start to share music with each other um, and make music together. But it also means that other people are gonna realize that that you've become a guitar player and they're gonna wanna hear some of your music and, and suddenly um, your life changes in a way you didn't expect. You start to talk about music with people that you never thought you'd be talking about music with before um, and it's a beautiful thing. Thanks guys. So cool to hear from Kurt G. I had the pleasure of meeting Kurt in person at last year's Acoustic Life Festival. And uh, I'm just always inspired by Kurt and his original songs and just his, his enthusiasm for the Guitar Geek community, which he shared with you right there. Now, next up, you know, I mentioned Julie I. She made me this wonderful Stanley Cup miniature, which I, I think is the coolest thing ever. Uh, she made me this Canadian-inspired mug. She made me... Uh, remember the fact that Montreal has won 24 Stanley Cups and Chicago has only won six, but she also made me incredibly grateful to have her as a part of the Guitar Geek community because she submitted a guitar gratitude video. So without further ado, here's Julie I from Canada. I have to let you know that I'm really grateful for my guitar journey. I love everybody that is in it. I met tons of people. I get to share my music with uh, my small audience right here. And um, every time I take my guitar out of the case, it's just like a daily Christmas present. Every time I open it up, it's like 
a new piece of excitement comes out and um, it just makes me happy to practice. So I hope you share the same thing. Guitar Geeks Unite. Huge thanks again to Julie I. In a couple couple quick notes there, she clearly is a guitar geek. She's got the guitar hanging on the wall. She's got her Acoustic Tuesday for Vets shirt right there. She also has a hockey stick in the back corner, a picture of Yoda, and her dog's name is Whiskey. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a shining example of how awesome this Guitar Geek community is. Uh, so huge thanks to both Kurt and Julie for submitting those guitar gratitude videos. Now you might be thinking to yourself, I want to share some guitar gratitude. I want to inspire the Guitar Geek community. I want to get introspective and publicly share something that I am grateful for that the guitar brought into my life. Maybe you met your significant other because of guitar. Maybe you want to thank your first guitar teacher. Maybe you want to thank that guy down the road that hooked you up with your very first guitar. Maybe the guitar means something much deeper than just a simple instrument to you. If that's the case, please share it with a Guitar Gratitude segment. Just visit guitargratitude.com. You'll, you'll be prompted to record a 60 second video. It's super easy. You can do it from your phone or your computer, just click the button, you can record it. If you don't like what you recorded, just go ahead and delete it and upload a different one. It's actually really easy. If I can do it, you can do it. Believe me, I'm not a technological wonderkind. I'm, I'm quite the opposite. So it's, it's really, really easy. In fact, you can even take notes that pop up on the screen so you, so you don't have to forget anything, which is really, really nice since you only have 60 seconds. But again, please go to guitargratitude.com and help inspire your fellow guitar geek today. Share your guitar gratitude and I'll feature you on an upcoming episode of Acoustic Tuesday. Remember, during times of worry, during times of stress, we wanna lean on our guitar, but more importantly, we find ourselves in this unique situation in which I am so thankful for. We can lean on one another in this guitar geek community because we we gather virtually every single Tuesday for the Acoustic Tuesday Show. So again, visit guitargratitude.com to su submit your guitar gratitude segment today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, guitar geeks, young, old, near, far, of all ages, we find ourselves at round seven. Coming into round seven, Martin sits at three points. Taylor sits at four points. Taylor is currently in the lead. We have one more round in this fight. Can Martin tie it or does Taylor run away? I don't know. We're gonna have to dig into round seven to find out. What's the category we're discussing in round seven? It is artist roster. Yes, who plays Taylor's, who plays Martin's, and which artist roster is, is, is bigger, is, is more full, is more full of prolific songwriters, prolific instrument players, prolific players of, of all kinds. Which artist roster wins in this category. Now you might think you know, but let's actually go to the artists, some of my favorite artists, to decide the winner of this particular round. So first, let's kick things over to one of my favorite songwriters of all time, The White Buffalo. What does he play? Into my mind Taking me up to the observatory. As a child, what am I? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Taylor comes out strong in round seven with a strong, strong left hook. Yes, the White Buffalo plays a Taylor. But now let's visit John Moreland, one of my other favorite singer songwriters, and see what he plays. Hang me in the Tulsa County Stars. Hang me in the Tulsa County Stars. Meet me where I land if I slip and fall too far Hang me in the Tulsa County stars well, I don't want to come back down to earth. Oh yes, it's true. Martin answers with a right cross. It's true, it's dead even at this point. John Moreland plays a Martin D28. Now let's visit flaming hot, <laughs> flaming hot flat picker Trey Hensley and see what his guitar of choice is in this video. When I was only four years old, I'm a freeborn man, and my home is on my back. I know every inch of the highway and every foot of back road, every mile of railroad track. And after that uppercut delivered by Trey Hensley, Martin's backs. Martin's back, singular, is against the rope. 
Yes, Trey Hensley chose a tailor for that performance, and holy smokes, you gotta see that performance. Go to acousticlife.tv forward slash AT137 uh, to see that performance in its entirety. I am delighted to call uh, Trey a friend of mine. He performed at the Acoustic Life Festival along with Rob Ikes, one of my favorite dobro players of all time, and wow. Yeah, he picked a tailor. So we got the White Buffalo played a tailor. And then Martin answers with John Moreland playing a Martin. And then Trey comes in and is just like, no, 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 no. It's all Taylor from here on out. Now we're going to visit, well, this is an individual you've seen already today, but he's got a different guitar. Yes, we're going to visit Billy Strings to see what his guitar of choice is in this video. Yes, that was Billy Strings playing a Sunburst Martin from 1950. So that puts another punch in Martin's statistical column. I've never, I've never uh, done the play-by-play -play for boxing, so I don't know what what it's called. I guess we'll just say that Martin scored a hit, a punch, a connection. I don't know that one. That one seemed like a full-on uppercut. I mean, you got Billy Strings playing a Martin, flat picking it so expertly. I think that's a full-blown uppercut delivered by Martin to Taylor. Now, this next artist is the last video we'll see. Currently, you got two Taylor players, you got two Martin players, and I would be silly if I didn't bring this artist into the fold. I mean, you would, you all watching would think I was completely out of my brain if I did not feature this artist. So I'm not even gonna say the name of this artist. We'll just go to the video to see what they play. Here. Yes, that was a Martin D45 from the 40s. Now, special thanks to Carter Vintage Guitars for both the Billy Strings video and the Molly Tuttle video. And of course, you figured out the artist was indeed Molly Tuttle, who delivered a square punch on the jaw to Taylor, putting Martin up one punch over two punches. One, pu one punch, three punches over two punches in this artist shootout. Now, you might be thinking, Tone, Martin's the clear-cut winner here. Quit quit yapping and just get get on with it, okay? And I, I think you're right. Yes, I want to say this. Round number seven, the artist roster, I think Martin wins by a long shot. We looked at some videos that prove that, but we've also got Hank Williams playing a Martin guitar. We've also got Kurt Cobain playing a Martin guitar. We've got Sturgill Simpson playing a Martin guitar. And yes, Gene Autry playing a Martin guitar. Martin is a far and away clear-cut winner in round number seven. So, after round seven, we've got Martin guitars sitting at four points. We've got Taylor guitars sitting at four points. It is a deadlock tie. These two guitar manufacturers are neck and neck. We've gone through seven different rounds, focusing on a category in each round. And at the end of these seven rounds, they've come out in a deadlock tie. Now, what do we do? Well, Guitar Geeks, at this point in time, I turn to you. We've created an incredible community within the Acoustic Tuesday Show, here on YouTube, in the comments below. I'm sure there's discussion just raging. But right now, I wanna ask one final thing of you. I wanna ask you to vote. All you have to do is simply put Martin or Taylor in the comments below. And yes, on a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday, namely episode number 139, I will announce the winner that you decide. Yes, we're gonna put this battle to rest. 
I want you to voice your opinion. Go ahead and vote in the comments below. Martin or Taylor, please submit that comment as soon as you possibly can. I know you got a gut feeling on this one. Just go ahead and plop it in the comments below. And on episode 139, I will announce the winner once and for lore, once and for all, I almost said for lore, once and for all, this Guitar Geek community is gonna put an end to the discussion of Martin versus Taylor because you're gonna vote and you're gonna do so right now in the comments below. Uh, please go ahead and put your vote in the comments. I am so delighted to see what you guys see. Remember to be kind. We're all different guitar geeks. We come from different areas. We come from different perspectives. Just go ahead and vote, but also keep an open mind. There might be a lot of opinions shared in the comments below that you may have never considered. They may very well sway your vote. So make sure to read those comments and then vote accordingly. I'll announce again on episode number 139 who the winner of this fight is Martin guitars or Taylor guitars and we'll even see gosh I'm wondering if we can even get a video from one of the winners to see if they would uh, graciously accept the title I don't know we'll have to see who the winner is I'll, I'll have to you you guys do your part you vote and I'll do my part and I'll uh, uh, figure out who the winner is and, and contact the the appropriate party all right vote accordingly now you might be thinking to yourself, Tone, this has been a long, tiring episode. And I agree with you. The, the fight has been, the war has been waged. So we should just, we should just go ahead and take a sneak peek into next week just to see what's going to happen. Let's cleanse our palate next week on Acoustic Tuesday. Don't think twice. It's all right. We'll go along like a rolling stone just blowing in the wind until we get tangled up in blue next to a girl from the North Country. And although the times they are a-changin', we'll definitely seek shelter from the storm. Yes, next week's episode of Acoustic Tuesday is entirely dedicated to none other than Bob Dylan. I want you to check out that episode. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time here on YouTube. And of course, for your Acoustic Tuesday fix in between Tuesdays, please visit AcousticLife.tv. You could do a deep dive on anything I've ever featured on Acoustic Tuesday. Not to mention, you'll get to see all those interviews I featured today in their entirety. And I gotta assure you, for a guitar geek like yourself, it is a must-watch scenario because you got a vote coming up and you need to be well informed so go to acousticlife.tv take in those interviews and of course do a deep dive on all things acoustic tuesday thank you for sharing your time with me today i want to thank you for being a guitar geek i want to thank you for encouraging and supporting your fellow guitar geeks within this community and remember guitar geeks unite i'll see you next tuesday on acoustic tuesday cheers